in one day. Sarah Poisson had no life outside the Kingdom Hall. When the congregation cast her out, she had no choice but to move away. She didn't just lose every friend she had. Overnight she was homeless, penniless, scraping a living to bring up her children. The friends they'd had openly shunned them. But with a family now free of the church, Holly could finally tell her mother the truth. Her stepfather had abused her too. When he tried to gain access to her younger sister, Holly finally did what the elders hadn't. She walked into the local police station. It was clear to me that it was a, a uh, lice crossing, a, a, a road to cross. Never any doubt in my mind that Holly could do it. It, it was a tremendous effort on her part. And it, it smacked of, of raw courage from beginning to end. Brewer, who walked into his office that day, was a very changed, a very defiant young woman. My earliest memory is like about three years old. My latest memory is 10 years old, and he gradually worked into being interested in me to full-blown sex intercourse over those years. It was a harrowing time. The police took Holly back to the house where the abuse had started. He had a room that he had found in our very, very old house. Uh, that was underneath the barn that you had to crawl through a hole to get to. And once you were in there, you were isolated from the entire house and from everything. And uh, that's where everything would go down. Would he kneel down on, on next to you or over you? Um, he'd, he'd sit, like, sit and hard sit and let me do whatever I was to do. Okay. Like All right. And just, like, and I'd be over uh-huh. And did he tell you what he wanted you to do? I knew after a while. Okay. She told the police exactly what Barry had wanted, of the brutal sexual assault she suffered throughout her childhood. I had no vision of me growing up and being 16. I thought he was eventually going to kill me, you know, and then I'd be free, and that's the way I looked at it. John, go ahead. It's crazy. It's really hard to come back here and know that. I know. You know He'd say things like, thank you for obeying me. And he'd thank me for obeying him and reminding me that word, the obey word. That was a big thing. Paul Berry was confident Holly would never go to the elders. Apart from anything else, the Jehovah's Witnesses have a clear rule on sin. They need two witnesses or a confession before they'll take action. As Holly told her story, it seemed to police that this rule in a strict religious community would have let the abuse continue. So this is the same sheet that yeah. we've here before? All the same. All right. Sexual abuse of children is not to be tolerated. And I don't care what their reasoning was. It was faulted reasoning. They were wrong. And as far as I'm concerned, they were criminally negligent. That's my take on it. Even with just the child's word, with one witness, with just the mother's word, without the two witnesses, their Bible tells them they need. Well, unfortunately, uh, most kids don't have several witnesses observing them get raped. That's an unfortunate part of it. It took nearly four years for the case to come to court. Paul Berry faced 17 charges of aggravated sexual assault. I was holding Holly's hand, and she had a lot of pointy rings on, and she was squeezing my hand really tightly, and it took them a long time to get through the verdict because there were so many indictments, and when it was over, my hand was all blood, and I didn't even feel it.
And it was so powerful to be believed. But not everyone did believe them. Even after he was convicted by a jury on all 17 indictments, two dozen members of the Kingdom Hall turned up at the sentencing hearing. They all appeared to give character statements for Paul Barry. He had already been found guilty, and they, they found room in their hearts to stand in front of that child and say, we don't believe any of it. And what they were saying was they didn't believe the child, they didn't believe in the system of justice, they didn't believe the judge, they didn't believe the jury, they didn't believe anyone except themselves. Everything they were saying was, he's such a fine worker, I've worked with him secularly, and, you know, he always shows up to work on time, and he's such a good worker. Everybody said that, and, and also the second half, was everybody started saying, he's babysat our kids hundreds of times. I would let him babysit our kids every day. And he's such a good worker. And I was just sitting there like, he's not on trial for being a negligent worker. I can't imagine how badly she must have felt not to have been believed by elders in, in her own close-knit community. What a horrible blow to a child this must have been. Shame. Shame on them. But another serious accusation is leveled against Jehovah's Witnesses. In their efforts to cover up abuse, they may even try to frustrate police investigations. In Birmingham, West Midlands police were told of a sexual assault by a Jehovah's Witness on a young boy. They asked local elders for help. They were very reluctant to, to give up any information towards me. It was a, an uphill battle, battle, so far as the church was concerned with me, uh, virtually at, at every turn. They actually said to me, if unless I could provide two Jehovah's Witnesses who had actually seen the offence, then as far as they were concerned, the uh, offence hadn't taken place. The boy was Simon Brady. He was just nine when he was abused by a member of this Kingdom Hall. He felt he could tell no one. The thought, if you go to elders, if you want to be believed or you have a complaint about someone, then... There has to be more than one of you, there has to be two people. There has to be more than one witness, basically, or, you know. <laughs> what can I say, they want more than one witness, you know. How do I go to them, you know? They want to believe me. Statement of Simon Andrew Brady, age 18. I recall that one of the brothers of the congregation, a man known to me as Jasmine Patty, began to take an interest in me. I have been eight or nine years old at the time. Simon Brady's parents were going through a divorce. Jaswan Patty offered to help out, take him off his mother's hands. He'd take me for drives after the meetings. Um, he'd take me home from the congregation, you know, give me a lift home. I can remember one occasion he took me to his sister's flat while she was away on holiday. And he said we'd go in and we'd check, we'd check his sister's flat. And there he, he severely sexually abused me, basically, like, you know. What did he do? Uh, it's quite severe, to be honest with you. It was severe. It's, um, even though I think of it, I don't... You know, it hurts now to talk about it, to be honest with you. And I've, I've done that once already, lot, you know, and I find it very hard to talk about that anymore, basically. He dropped me off at home. I remember going to the bathroom and scrubbing with Dettol because I felt dirty. That's what had happened. For years, he said nothing afraid the elders wouldn't believe him. When he finally did speak out, his instincts as a nine-year-old proved right.